Oh my god. Check these four puddles. Oh no. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ubisoft had a clear and lofty goal in mind as they built Far Cry 4, create the most authentic gaming experience ever. The dedicated developers in Montreal were step one. Immersion in the game's inspiration, the Himalayas, was step two. It was imperative to see the people, places, and things that would help bring this game to life. Nepal all suggests like a lot of different kinds of environments, right? How are you gonna feel going from sort of the virtual world that you have created? into the new world that we're going to. In my head, I have this Wikipedia idea of what Nepal is. I've been reading about what makes it the way it is right now, what's been happening over the last 10 years, the last thousand years. But I'm, I'm hoping that we can uncover something uh, that isn't presented on the web. The expectations are gonna be super high after Far Cry 3, we really wanna push it and bring it to the next level. It's super important that the environment you're in feels believable, like you can look around and understand the space and it feels like uh, a real place from the real world. So being able to go to some of those locations is super, super interesting and super useful just to see how the ground crunches under your feet and just the tiny little textures like that and we can try and bring that extra level of uh, authenticity to it. Arriving in Kathmandu was intense. The end of the Nepali Civil War meant a mass migration into the city, and with it came mass pollution, overpopulation, and the sense that an ancient city wasn't ready for modernity to be thrust upon it. Everyone seemed to be experiencing that sensory overload, too. It's visually super noisy. I'm having trouble processing everything that I'm seeing because I'm trying to remember it all. Like, I'm like, that's useful. Well, that's super useful. That post is incredible. That text is awesome. Right now, I'm just like, I'm just trying to absorb it all. Local rumor had it that an animal sacrifice was going to be happening to appease the gods after the monsoon. Or maybe just to appease the gods in general. It was sort of unclear. But Nepal has strong ties to its past, so attending an animal sacrifice is significant in understanding traditional Nepali culture. It was a perfect introduction to the country. <laughs> So we've made it to Dakshina Kali Temple, where the goddess Kali asks for blood sacrifice from her devotees. The face is the face only of Kali could love. So we're going to follow them to the altar where that goat will be sacrificed to slake the thirst of Kali. It was certainly a normal cultural moment. But for a second, everything got pretty quiet. I was expecting like a clean cut, but the whole like slice and then guide. It's been super interesting to get this close to the source material. It's like it's the kind of experience that we can, that we can never normally get. Um, and I haven't had working on the game before. I, d I didn't realize the significance of bells, especially around temples and places of worship. In my head before I went, I had this like very uh, stereotypical kind of soundscape of what a place of worship sounded like. I think what we'll end up with is something that's less, less like a like a stock movie soundtrack kind of vibe, and we'll we'll capture something that's much more much more realistic. After a brief foray into animal sacrifice, a small plane was taken to Pokhara, a town famous for both being a gateway to the Himalayan highlands and the home base for Nepal's legendary fighting Gurkha. The legend of the Gurkha inspired the warriors created in the game. <laughs> One, 
The young Gurkhas in training gave a sense of what the challenges and motivations were to join one of the world's most elite fighting forces. They were established by the British Empire in the mid-19th century, and have fought alongside British Special Forces ever since. It's often said, if a man says he's not afraid of dying, he's either lying or is a Gurkha. Mark and Phil, you guys studied Gurkhas a lot as you were developing the game, right? Yeah. And so what is it like now actually meeting young dudes who are trying to be Gurkhas? It's interesting to meet the, the personalities behind that, just to see how dedicated uh, people are to actually achieving that. Like they'll try, like these guys will try year after year after year to, uh, to get in. The de dedication is it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. I have been trying British Army for four times, and this is my last time. Gurkhas are very closely associated with the Kukuri, a curved do-it-all weapon that's been referred to as the Gurkha blade. Kukuri is very funny. I don't know if I can see it, but I don't know if I can see it. The Kukuri is very funny. The Kukuri is very funny. The Kukuri is very funny. Just a few years ago, a retired Gurkha successfully fought off 40 thieves who had hijacked a train, killing three of them and seriously injuring eight others, with just a kukuri. It's also the primary blade used in Far Cry 4. We will die for Gurkha, sir, if we are selected for British Army Gurkha. It was becoming apparent that pride came with being a native of the Himalayas. As the journey continued towards the Gorilla Trail, the roads were getting narrower and more perilous. The conversations with the young Gurkhas weighed heavily on everyone's minds. There was a looming sense that an intense few days were to come, as the developers were going to meet the real people behind the game they wanted to create, people whose lives had been torn apart by the Civil War.